Well, I got this year closing and your insurance. I got a little more than I bargained for here, but um, uh, <laughs> I, I do appreciate the chair putting on uh, this hearing, and um, I just wanted to ask uh, a couple questions for uh, my own uh, sort of uh, further insight into the issue. Um, I, you know, I, I'm fairly torn on this issue because uh, on, on the one hand, I'm very sympathetic uh, to the rights holders, uh, and um, it does seem there is some level of arbitrariness uh, in the law. Uh, on the other hand, I think that, uh, you know, any time you sort of uh, redefine uh, what, uh, you know, the, uh, the scope of a right is uh, when there's been reliance interest built up over a long time, uh, that creates, you know, some uh, uh, disruption that could have some uh, far-reaching consequences. Uh, though balanced against that, I'll say there are times when, you know, uh, we have occasion to sort of rethink the scope of rights and how they relate to one another. Uh, and uh, perhaps with uh, the way the world is changing right now, uh, when it comes to AI and, uh, and other technologies, uh, maybe this is such a time. So um, I just invite, well, first of all, I'd like to, um, Mr. Harrell, if you might give me just sort of a better understanding, and I'm sure this was covered to some extent earlier in the hearing, of um, what exactly the financial uh, impact and the impact on the viability of local radio across the country uh, might be um, if some of the proposed changes were made. Um, I mean, I think that local radio is sort of a unique uh, public good uh, that serves many purposes, so that's of concern to me. But then I'd invite anyone else on the panel to comment on, on any of the other considerations that I've raised to the extent they haven't been uh, covered in the hearing. So, Congressman, thank you. Uh, any new performance royalty on top of what we already pay will cause us to cut local staff which will decrease our efforts around community service and diminish the safety net that we provide in the communities that we serve. I had the unique opportunity prior to coming to Radio One to serve as the CEO of the Columbus Urban League. And we have many community services that we provide as a nonprofit organization. And I benefited, and our community benefited firsthand because of our relationship with Radio One and the local broadcasters to support the things that we wanted to do, whether it was gun buybacks, or health fairs or uh, job fairs. That's so I know firsthand the impact of radio, uh, local radio, because of my experience as a nonprofit CEO. So those are the things we continue to do today. And any performance royalty or any other fee on top of what, the millions that we already pay will diminish our capacity to provide these services in communities around the country. And and Mr. Mr. Chairman, the, the legal re copyright regime that governs terrestrial radio to address one of your questions, is not arbitrary. In, in, the, in the 1990s, as Congress was grappling with the copyright laws that ought, ought to govern public performance on what were then new emerging streaming services, they, Congress took the step of establishing a unique performance right in the sound recording for streaming and satellite services, effectively, over the course of several years. Prior to that, Public performance, the payment, and broadcasters for the last 100 years have paid a royalty to the songwriter. At the time that Congress considered that change in law for the digital services, there was an explicit exemption granted for local broadcast because we are freely available. We can't pass along a fee through expensive subscription services. There's no expensive data fees. Uh, and we are community-based. So there are unique considerations that I would say when we talk about all of the changes in the media landscape and adaptations that happened in 1971, 1995, and again, as we're looking at AI, uh, Congress needs to account for with new technologies. What hasn't changed is what broadcast is, which is locally available, free, in the communities, with essentially the same relationship with the recording industry that we've had for the past 100 years. Mr. Chairman, if I may respond to that, <clears throat> we keep hearing that this is how it's been for 100 years, 100 years, 100 years. I think it's fair to say that just because there's been inequity for 100 years is not a reason to keep it moving forward. Um, this has been something that the recording industry has fought for decades. And you know, I salute radio for all that they do in terms of community uh, brought community relationships and localism and what they do in their charitable works. But at the end of the day, it's a $15 billion industry that is paying nothing to the artists that make their input. Um, you know, 
a lot has changed in those 100 years. A lot has changed in the 30 years that, that uh, Mr. Legit just referenced. What's different today? Um, I'll tell you one thing that's different is streaming didn't make up 85% of the recorded music revenue. It makes up 85% today. That is a huge difference. Number two, you didn't have 20, 30, 40 other streaming platforms that all have to pay, competitors of the broadcasters. That was not true 40 years ago. That is true now. And you didn't have AI where, once again, the broadcasters are looking to protect their content and we, we share the need to protect all creators from abusive uh, use by AI. But, you know, that is something that did not, that did not exist uh, 30 years ago. And while we support and everyone in this room who is seeking to address the problems with AI and all of the bills that, that address that, to move forward on that and not fix what is a hundred year old um, stealing of the, month of the, of the music, uh, it just seems that you know, Congress needs to take care of that as well as the other AI problems. All right, thank you very much. Uh, that concludes today's hearing. I'm sorry, Mrs. Travis, did you have? I was just going to add to that, and it's never too late to do the right thing, I think is something we all believe in. And where they're talking about their, when they negotiated, they paid writers. Why do they pay writers and not the artists? I just, I just am having a hard time trying to decipher why it's okay to pay one party, but not, not the singer, not the one that puts it on the radio, because if he didn't sing it, then that art, then the writer's work stays in a drawer somewhere. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that concludes today's hearing. On behalf of Chairman Issa, I'd like to thank our, all our witnesses for appearing before the committee today. Without objection, all members will have five legislative days to submit additional written questions for the witnesses or additional written materials, additional materials for the record. Without objection, the hearing is adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.